It's another rousing edition of Wake Up with Wilder, our weekly look back and forward with the ODU football program and its head coach, Bobby Wilder. Coach, good morning. Happy Labor Day. Good morning and right back at you as we labor through this day. You know, we were laboring on Saturday with another barn burning contest for the Monarchs. Unbelievable. You've had a chance to look at tape and sort of digest the thoughts now on Eastern Michigan in that contest. It's what we thought it would be, Ted. So many new players, first time players playing a road game, um, struggled early. Just some, some basic fundamental assignments, fell behind by 14 in the first half, 14 in the second half, and then just did what we like to do, you know, take it right down to the wire, but really proud of the way our guys hung in there and then the way we finished. Well, and, and there was no panic, it didn't seem, and, and that starts with you and your staff. How, how do you teach those guys during the offseason and the preseason mm -hmm. that these situations are going to get a little dicey, we can't lose our composure? It, what you just said, situations. Uh, we play situational football all the time in practice. There's always a purpose to what we're doing in practice. So spring ball, the summer, the, the two-minute drill, um, we do it daily. And, and put the kids in different two-minute situations, whether it's the offense ahead or offense uh, behind. And what happened Saturday was great execution by the offense to score in the two-minute drill, and then great execution by the defense to get the turnover in that situation. And uh, a lot of our kids talking to them after the game, Ted, said they just felt comfortable in that situation because we've done it so much. All right, so let's talk about uh, some of the headliners. First, Ray Lowry leads the nation in rushing and scoring. Uh, over 200 yards, a career high for him, and he really broke up in the game. He did. He In the first half, we didn't run the ball as well, made a couple adjustments at halftime. I thought the offensive line um, with the adjustments in the second half much better. Uh, the receiver blocking was outstanding and Ray was really dynamic. The second half was really when we got the running game going. 153 yards for Lowry after halftime. Shuler Bentley, his first start, first time he had played football in a couple of years, mm -hmm. assess his performance. Yeah, what I was most impressed with, Ted, was his ability at the line of scrimmage to, to get the protections called out. He changed a couple run plays at the line of scrimmage, uh, protected the ball, no turnovers, which for a freshman quarterback, no turnovers, uh, no penalties on offense. We didn't have any procedural issues. Uh, I thought his performance was very good. And, and the key thing is he sees what he needs to improve on. He knows there's a lot of room to get better. Now, over emphasis, over uh, anxiousness perhaps led to this, but a uh, couple of silly penalties, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunate penalties. Talk to me about those and how they're not desired, but sometimes a little bit expected. Yeah, well, you, you'll take the aggressive penalties as a head coach because you know you can pull back a little bit. It's it's to get them to go forward. Um, that that's a little bit more challenging. We had. Um, four situations with the quarterback, and then we had two on special teams. Both of them on special teams were, were Vinny Lowe just being too aggressive uh, to the ball, and we can fix that. The ones on the quarterback, there were a couple of them, uh, O'Shane and Malik, that just, they pushed him after the whistle. There's an emphasis in Conference USA on protecting the quarterback. Uh, Mr. Austin is a Hall of Fame NFL official who's in charge of our officials, and they're going to protect the quarterback. Um, the one with Rashad Coward where he tackled him when he threw the ball. I said to Rashad, I'll, I'll take that penalty. I mean, he, he was tackling the quarterback. And the, the explanation to me by the official was he did it too aggressively. Well, this is football, so aggressive things will happen. But all things that I feel like we can clean up, Ted. Now, let's talk a, a little bit about moving forward. Mm -hmm. They say a teams get uh, most improvement shown uh, between week one and two. Mm -hmm. What are you going to work on this week, and what do you see as a need for improvement? I've always felt that the reason you see that improvement, if it does happen week one to two, is all of your new players that played in their first game take a deep breath and go, okay, I can do this. And now I understand why we do this in practice. I understand the purpose of this. And, and we had 20 new players out there Saturday, Ted. We had the, uh, the eight redshirt freshmen on defense, five on offense. We had seven true freshmen. Uh, we had some sophomores that hadn't played a lot of football for us. So there, there were a lot of first time guys getting, uh, getting involved in the action. Uh, the quarterback, um, Shuler Bentley, Tim Ward, who, who won the football game for us with Great the interception. Play. Yeah, in the last drive. He, True freshman out there playing. Miles Fox, true freshman from Collins Hill High School, former teammate of, of Taylor Heineke, playing his first game at defensive tackle, played 26 snaps. Had had the play of the game, perhaps, Ted, on the on the goal line, the third and one when we made the goal line stand. Miles Fox destroys the offensive tackle, beats the fullback, 
and, and tackles the running back. This is a true freshman we're talking about. So a lot of really good things happen for the young guys. Monarchs will take a 1-0 and record to form and field at SB Ballard Stadium, the home opener this week against Norfolk State. Talk about the Spartans who fell at Rutgers. Yeah, really excited to get started uh, at home. Seven home games this year, Ted. And uh, as I shared with the players yesterday in a team meeting, they're very excited to come back home. Uh, Norfolk State got off to a great start in this football game. And then I felt like they got worn down a little bit. They were missing some of their key players. But it, after watching the game, it looks like a typical Norfolk State team that really solid on defense. Um, the difference, I think, is they're going to be much better on offense. Uh, what Coach Scott's doing with them schematically. Uh, they've got a good quarterback, Greg Hankerson from Florida Atlantic, who transferred in. Gerard Johnson, our former running back, solid player. So I think this will be an exciting game. A couple more things for you. I know we're running late on Where do you have to be, anyway? Where do you have to be? Uh, it's Labor Day. Come on. Chill. Two things. First of all, Taylor Heineke makes the Minnesota Vikings have to be really proud. Yeah, I talked to him after our game uh, Saturday and told him uh, it was a really special day from the standpoint we won, um, and he's now a, a quarterback in the NFL. He was... I think he was more excited about our win than I was at the time. I was exhausted from the game, and he just didn't want to stop talking about it. But uh, he was thrilled when he got the news, when the, when the coaching staff informed him. Um, felt like he had earned it. I don't think this was a gift, Ted. I think he went in there as a guy who had to prove that he could play. He wasn't drafted, as you know, an undrafted guy. But uh, based on what he did in preseason, I, the Vikings knew that if they released him and tried to put him on the practice squad, they were going to lose him. Somebody was going to pick him up after that performance, but he's proven he belongs there, and what an exciting day for Old Dominion and for Taylor Heineke. And lastly, before we get out of here, exciting. We've always said that this Monarch football program is wonderful when it comes to ratings because they always play barn-burning games. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a tidbit about the telecast on, uh, on Saturday. We were in the same time slot as UVA at UCLA, and the Monarch-Eastern Michigan game outrated the Cavaliers, so well done. Wow. How about that? That is pretty exciting. I think that shows the loyalty of our fans and, and the interest in this area, Ted, in this Hampton Roads, coastal Virginia region, as I like to call it, when I'm on the West Coast, because I don't know what Hampton Roads is, but they know coastal Virginia. Just to, to know that there's so many people that are excited about our program, and as you know, Ted, because you call them all, this is four games in a row we've won, all four in the final seconds. Used to be brown hair. <laughs> No longer after following this football program. <laughs> At least you got here. <laughs> well, some. Uh, Coach, thanks for the time. You got it. Always great to be with you. And we thank you folks for joining us. We hope you haven't uh, see you Saturday. felt Can't it be wait. a waste. We'll see you for the home opener. The Foreman Field at SB Ballard Stadium. It's a 7 o'clock kick. And don't forget, the cannon. The is cannon's back. And get Ted a sausage sub. The poor guy works all day. <laughs> and doesn't need any sausage subs. For Coach Wilder, I'm Ted Alexander. It's Wake Up with Wilder here on Monarch Media.